Hi everyone, my name is Benedetta Mussati and I'm a first year DPhil student in the AMCDT at the University of Oxford. I'm here today to discuss with you a bit about the application process to a CDT and uh, more specifically um, describing both my experience and also making you consider what are points that you want to think about when thinking whether to do or not this career path. I will also talk a bit about the differences between a traditional PhD program and a CDT program and uh, reasons why I decided to go for the latter. And also I will then delve a bit into the application process. So some general tips that I have that I hope can help you if you're considering doing a DPhil. So I decided to apply for a PhD and uh, do a research program such as a DPhil because I had experience uh, in uh, researching for my bachelor and my master dissertations and although these are smaller and shorter pieces of uh, independent research that I carried out compared to what you will do in a DPhil which is uh, three to four years long I know that I just remember that anytime I finished either of the two I was always feeling uh, this nice feeling of oh I enjoyed what I've done it was a hard work but I really was invested in the research I was carrying out I enjoyed uh, the aspects of it that were for example coming up with a research question finding a topic that I was interested in investigating and explaining finding reasons of why I wanted uh, to research that topic and why I thought it was worth investigating it and uh, coming up with a, a first set of experiments to prove or disprove hypotheses that I had and then adapting my work based on the findings that I had from the from uh, the first set of experiments and uh, all of this was hard and challenging work I cannot say it wasn't but I just remember that both times I I was finding it hard, but also I was always feeling uh, confident that I could find a way to work out what I was looking for and uh, finding a way to explore more the topics. And in general, it was just satisfying for me. I thought that it, yeah, it was hard work, but it was paying off by giving me very great feelings and making me do something that was interesting and quite aligned with one of my main features, which is that I am a very curious person. I like investigating, I like asking questions, I like talking with people that are specialists or in a certain topics and maybe they have knowledge, especially if they have knowledge different from mine. And I like discussing and learning from others. And uh, so these are some of the reasons that attracted me to a research career. I chose specifically to do a PhD because I like that um, it gives me that freedom of for three, four years to investigate what I feel is worth researching. And also it's not just freedom, but you also need to learn how to argue uh, your stance, your opinion, and uh, in a sound and reasoning and reasonable way. And I think these are valuable skills that can be transmitted afterwards to other aspects of my life and uh, my working career, whether I decide to go into postdoc or I decide to work in industry. So, as I mentioned, I am in the AIMS CDT, which is Autonomous Intelligence Machine and Systems at University of Oxford. And uh, a CDT is very similar to a standard PhD program. It's just that at the beginning, before starting the three, three four years of independent research, you have a first year with uh, taught courses modules which are in the area in which you have decided to specialize. So these thought modules usually 
are there to provide you with some additional skills and allow you to have the time to explore topics and area uh, within uh, the main field that you're researching that you may have not considered before, you didn't have the opportunity to work on before for whatever reason, for whatever background you're coming from. So, for example, let's say in autonomous intelligence machine and systems, there is a strong focus in machine learning, which is what I was attracted in since uh, my third year of undergraduate and what I have been working towards for the past three, four years of my career. But also there is aspects about control theory and so more engineering based research and there is robotics, there is uh, research in maybe in a control system and verification. And I personally chose the CDT because I one of the things that I like the most when I research topics is drawing connection between things that I have learned before and the new things that I'm learning, seeing how various areas of computer science or also other fields are interconnected with one another and how we can apply knowledge from one area to discoveries and enhance research in another area. So I quite like the idea of the, and the structure of the CDT and uh, although I have topics uh, that I knew already that I was very invested and I was most likely gonna research for my full-on independent research part of the PhD I wanted to have the opportunity to still explore how I could connect them to other uh, subfields of machine learning and of these other fields that I've mentioned before so I think that this is something that is very important for you to consider when you decide to apply for a PhD or a CDT. If you already have a topic that you're sure you want to research and that's it, you already maybe know professors that work in it, maybe you had the opportunity to work on it during your bachelor or master dissertation and you already know that your supervisor is looking for students and you want to continue working with them, then I think it's great. and. Uh, Anyway, even if you choose to do a CDT at the end of the day, the majority of your program will be structured as a PhD. Because this first, the first year I'm just going, I have already done two thirds of it and it's going by so fast. Uh, soon I will be in, a, nor in my independent research part of the program. However, I think that if you're a person that generally enjoy researching and that they're strongly considering this career path, however, they haven't settled their mind yet on one specific topic, or maybe they have two topics that they like and they feel like they could combine them together, but they haven't found quite a supervisor to do so, then I would say definitely consider the CDT because that extra year allows you to explore the topics in more depth and uh, decide how to structure your research. Um, in terms of general tips that I will give uh, when uh, choosing to apply for a PhD is if you've understood that you want to go for this career path, choose a topic that's the first thing to do. Um, understand out of all the topics available in computer science or in whatever field you decide to specialize in, what is the one that you specifically are most attracted to. So there has to be a kind of aptitude from you to towards that field. So being capable of uh, working and discovering new aspects of it, curiosity towards it, and also strong passion for it because uh, you will have to spend long, long hours and time invested on it. So it has to be something that you feel like it's worth researching. Once uh, you've done that, uh, read papers uh, on, the, on the topic, find a research question that attracts you and start writing to professors. I think that the best advice that I can give is to uh, write to professors, whether you end up working with them or not, it is a great way to put yourself out and uh, also having to articulate your thoughts and present them to others and uh, finding if there are potential collaborators. 
once uh, you have found a professor or a handful of professors that you're interested in potentially working with, find out what are the requirements of their universities in terms of application, apply by the deadline. And uh, yeah, at that point is just really like, once you apply for the pro program, I mean, it's very similar to when you apply for undergraduate or masters in the sense there will be an application form that you will fill in that will require certain documents and different universities and different programs may require certain documents that are slightly different from one another so just do your application in time don't reach the last minute also because you will need references from your professors from at least two or three professors or referees in general that can vouch that you are capable of carrying out independent research. So I hope that all this information were helpful for you and yeah, best of luck.